Okay. Um, this is something else I was working on. Okay, so so I think you just go to you have to put some data in. Let me get some data. So this would be like NPV. It's not an order. I'm oh, sorry. This is the percentage and NPV, right? That's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's probably better if you give me your numbers because because <laughs> then it's not going to look right. Anyway, whatever. I'll put some numbers in here just to see. So what did you pick? So you said in you 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 um highlight everything and then say insert yeah. chart and you have to pick one. Uh the oh, line pick, picking line I didn't doesn't work. Do anything that way. Oh, okay. I I Googled online to see what I could do. So what I have is like something with points and I don't have scatter a way plot. To... You pick scatter. Okay, maybe that was what I did. No, try there. line. Let's see if line works. But I got two lines. I don't want two lines. Um, so I go to I think, insert. I think scatter. I think scatter is the right one, but you have to then. Okay, so if I said scatter, insert, uh, insert chart scatter, and then, um, then you want to you want to join the the points. Yes. Yes. So then you hit add chart element. I did this in a a video. I'm pretty sure with everybody. So trend line, so you go to, okay, so you have to touch the the chart, so okay. activate the chart, and then it shows up here on the left corner, add chart elements. And then you say trend line. And then uh, I guess. So you, can I get something? So you went to insert, then where? Uh, scatter, X, Y. Okay, I'll start over. So I, I highlight everything. So everyone, yeah, pay attention because this is um I think we did this already, but let's it's it's fine to do it again. Um insert chart and then see XY scatter. I don't know how I code I got before. That's what you must have done because you said you got dots, right? But you want to join them. Yeah. So then now I want to join them. So I highlight, do you have this far? Like you're going to have a different picture than me. I just made up some numbers. Yes. So after scatter, where do I go? So activate the chart. So double click the graph and then click here, add chart elements. This will pop up. Um, and you can add labels. You can, you can make it really pretty, but here you want to go trend line. And you want to add a line like you don't want a line because that's not what you want. You want you want a curve to. to but hit. when I go to home, I don't have chart elements. You have to touch the chart first. You have to touch the chart. You have to activate the chart, like double click on it or something. OK, so add now, chart element. Yeah. And then go down to trend line trend line and then more trend line options you don't want a line sorry i don't know line keeps coming i want uh i want more more options so the options show up on the other side more trend line options are over here on the right side if you can see it let me shrink this <laughs> you just put a line on oh my god okay, yeah I'm you don't want this. a line you want um i don't want a line trend line more you trend want line uh options. you got to go to the right now uh, sorry, more trend line because you don't want a line, you want a curve. So you got to go to more trend line options okay. and then you can pick a uh, polynomial. Polynomial. Yay. It works nice. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is um, not going the right way. Okay. Moving average. No, that's not what I want. Polynomial, logarithmic, probably. It's not a log. Anyway, it's because my numbers are wrong. <laughs> So okay. mine is not a, it's actually not a function when it crosses twice. 
that's another topic, but okay. So any questions about the graphs, everybody? Or that graph? Can we, can we go over everything? We can go over everything. Okay. I'm going to resist giving you everything. So I'm going to ask you guys a lot of questions. Okay. All right. If you guys participate, I will keep going. Otherwise I can't give you everything because that's just like too easy. But we can go over everything so you learn something here. Okay, so this is the assignment. Let me show it. And I'll let it, I'll leave it so that you can participate in the, um, and present as well. So this is the revised one, right? Okay, so I'm going to show this. Oh, what just happened? My file. All right, turn off the video because my husband was leaving. Uh, hold on, it's loading. So share screen. No. And let me know that you can see the whole assignment. It's very big. I have a very large screen for my eyes. So sometimes things may be distorted on your end. So just let me know. All right. So we have the first one that is interest to everyone. How far did you get with this? So what I did, I tried entering that formula equals you, Patty, do you want to show me your work? Oh, um, are you writing it on paper? I wrote it on paper. It, it's okay. It's okay. Continue. Continue. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, let me just see. No, it doesn't pick up. It doesn't show. Okay. So I did the formula for the, um, Excel, but it didn't work on Excel. Strange enough for me. Oh. I did the formula. Yeah. Tell it, me what you put inside there. Okay. I did equal minus 125,000. Plus thirty thousand okay. plus yeah. thirty thousand divided by Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. What is what did you put? Just equals? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Equals one twenty five thousand. Yeah. And then plus mm -hmm. everything then, connected, right? You didn't put any yes. spaces, no spaces. No spaces. Okay. NPV. Um ten percent or what's the percent? Nine percent. We're, we're searching for we're we're trying to find um IRR. Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. IRR. So I, then you use IRR. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, wait for IRR. It's not like that in IRR. Let, let me, let me verify because I don't use it. I did it another way to get the answer just to let you know. So what, what I showed you guys, let me pull up uh, the notes. What I showed you. I think you, you told us IRR equals minus the initial cost plus NPV, then all the other costs. That's what you showed us. Mm, I don't think so. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get the, the notes out. So mm -hmm. we're all looking at the same things. So it was in, uh, that was, IRR was in week seven. Let's hold on. I'm trying to grab my paperwork. Week seven. iPad mark. What week are we now? We are in week nine. So it was week seven. So week seven, we did capital budgeting. Week eight was, we did uh, that, that we finished um, techniques for evaluation. It's under the techniques for evaluation. All right. So then it's eight. No, we're in week 10. Week nine was last week. So it's eight. Okay. So then uh, the lecture notes, no, valuation techniques. Okay, markup. I'm going to look here and share this. So I'll, I'll share what I'm looking at. So this is in week eight. And um, sorry, I'm going to scroll. All right, this is what we did. Is this what you did? 
So you, you're going to do, you don't have to put, you have to put all the values, but you just, you, you make this in Excel. Patty, try this. So make this in Excel. I, I did that. I did that that way. I did it that way instead. And then what happened? Nothing. I happened. got, I don't know if it's correct, but I got um 16%. Okay. Without the guess, no guess. You just went ahead and, because you don't have to put the guess in. It's yeah. And even if. Like I did a guess value oh. of like fifteen percent, and, and it's still found sixteen percent. Okay, so let's verify. So you just want to know if it's right <laughs> at this moment. Well, I I actually wanted to know the other way to put it in the system because there's another um, way. Is there another way? The other way was to first find the guess rather than just doing it right away. So yes, to find the down. guess, you have to do this table here and then see where it crosses. So that's how, that's why here you would guess uh, 20 and it will find something in between. What did I use as my guess? Oh, I, I went to 23, I made it, I, I went closer. Um, see, it was hard to find it from, I was going through your work and it, it was so hard to find it. So what I did, if you scroll down a little bit further, Mm -hmm. I was talking about this formula. I tried to do that formula. Oh, no, you cannot solve that formula. Huh. That's the thing. You cannot solve it uh, by algebra. You can. Is that what you tried? I tried that on Excel. <laughs> oh, okay. Just putting numbers. Yeah. So that's, yes. so basically what you were doing, so you're doing this, but we're just, cal we're just calculating the NPV. That, so that's what that is. We were doing, we, we use this formula and we go until we get a zero. We go yeah. until we almost get zero. So, so, um, so that's, you did the right thing. You just feel uneasy about it. Um, so let's see, uh, anybody else have comments about what they did with this one? Comments? I think everyone tried this one. Comments? That doesn't seem to be what I did, but I'm very, very, very not sure. So you're, you're, you're not sure. Very, okay. very not sure. Very not sure. Okay, so let's see what I can do. So I'm going to go to Excel, put the numbers in. I'll make this bigger. I'll clear this. And I'll put it in the upper corner so maybe you can follow along. Professor. Sir, I have a question. Romy. When it comes to, we're, we're talking about problem number one, right? Yes. For the discount rate, um, we have to use the discount rate for this as well when we're trying no. to figure it out, correct? End. No. First, we just go with the, we just go with the cash flows. We're searching for the, we're searching for the discount rate that makes it the equation zero. That's what we're searching for. That's what the but IRR is. I use the I use the I use the the cash flows, but in order to get the to solve for the the NPV, the numbers that I was getting, I just randomly do we randomly select the percentage like I did negative five percent three yeah. and then I did zero. Um okay, say it again. What did you do before the you said random? You did what? I just selected for like the, the percentages to, to make, this, to make this chart. You yes. Chart. Okay. Yeah. That's what you can do. Mm -hmm. So I did like negative five, negative three, zero. Okay. Three, let's do that. Three. So negative five. Um, so five percent. Negative three. Well, I'll just go. I'll just use zero. Okay. And then five, right? And then yeah. ten. So I'll just go by ten. So it's a little even. Okay uh and then 20 so let's just start with that and here i'm going to put the data so year zero through five and the numbers are 125,000. And, and you can make them again you can make them you can format them for dollars right and then uh 30. 45, 45, thank you. And then 30, 40, and 50. Okay. 
All right. So then we make the NPV equation. So we say, um, well, we can we can say equals this it's equal plus NPV. So the first one stays out, and then we NPV. The, this is the present value of future cash flows of the rest. Oh, and I forgot the the rate. So the rate is going to be this one. So you guys can follow what I'm doing if you put it in the upper corner. So I'm using the 5%. You don't have to do it all like uh like But can I, I ask a question? Yes. Why were in, why, why do we have to be the ones formulating these percentages? That's I don't know. That bothers you. Yeah. Um Um well another question i could have given it to you but i gave you the nine percent so you can work around nine percent that's kind of like that's a why I did, mark. that's why i did three zero three six nine and then i maxed out at a ten now oh, when okay. you do the you keep going when you do uh -huh. when you do the e2 is that automatically going to give you that negative value it's, I, I, yeah, it'll, whatever's in E2, it's going to plop there. I mean, okay. I could write it. Okay. You could also write it. If you guys don't like the referencing thing, but the whole point of Excel is the referencing thing. <laughs> so, okay. so I'm trying to- I did it. I did that. it the long way. I did the- You wrote the number. Negative 125,000. And, and then I did the MPV formula. It's okay. It's okay. So I'm just trying to expand, one. you know, your, your use of this. But yeah, so in the future, you know, you can try practicing with this, but- um, is there another is there another way to do this other than entering? Because I did equals IRR bracket. I did B five, B ten to B ten. We we Patty, we took a step back. We're going to try and find it manually first, and oh, then okay. we're going to do the IRR thing. So we're going to do because you you got to do this. You actually have to do this first um, before you guess. But in this problem, it wasn't so necessary. It works out. Well, I guess I'm assuming 16 is it, but anyway, also the thing about this mm -hmm. is you can't interpret the IR without this chart. You don't know if it's positive or negative. You don't know anything about the NPV. You just got an IRR. So, so this chart, this profile of NPV tells you if the NPV is positive or negative. So the first one is a positive. And then what I can do is, oh, go back to my formula because I, okay. I don't want, so if I copy this formula going down, I'm going to lose the reference to year one, two, three, four, and five, because it'll also go down. So I need to freeze these. So I use the dollar signs, remember? So yeah, I got to repeat myself a bit with this, but practice makes perfect. There, so it's the same number, but it's, uh, I'll actually, what I'll do is I'll copy the formula to the left so you can see that. And let you see it, give me a minute. All right, so that's what I did. Can you see the whole screen? Yes. I can get rid of these decimals. I don't like these decimals. Uh, format oh whatever i'll leave them for now because they end up over here anyways okay so that's what i wrote and here i wrote e2 that references the 125,000 with no spaces plus npvs for the present value of future cash flows um and then that will take the interest rate from here, A2, and I do want interest rate to go to the next one. When I copy this formula down here, I want it to use the interest rate on the same row. So that's why I don't put dollar signs on the A2. Is Barbara here? Yes, oh, there I she am. is. Wow, we're in, <laughs> we're in sync. That was funny. Um, okay, so, and that's why I put the dollar signs here to freeze yep. these so they don't, uh, I keep referencing the same ones. So that's the, and that's, the that's the amount. I got that amount, 105, these are, these are all my amounts four. here. So uh, what again, uh, the little plus, Zero. the cross, copies Zero. it all the way down. So the formula changes itself. It says now E3, 
And this one says E4. Why is it doing that? No, that's not what I want. I, I need to freeze that too. I'm not going to get the right number. So I got to freeze this too. I forgot. Or else it'll keep going down. So I'm going to recalculate, double click. That's it. Is that what you got, Romy? I got the first one right, but the other numbers I got, let me see for which other one for 10 20 i'll copy all the formulas got, over no i i, I got five per, i got the five percent i'm sorry the negative five percent and the ten percent i got the same numbers 23 6 8 86 yeah because i did negative five, i did like increments of two and uh, i'm sorry oh, yeah you did different numbers yeah 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 of course right but the zero i don't know why i got a different number for zero for the zero percent Okay, let me let me take a step back. You guys understand the dollar sign? Ladies. So what did I find? Okay, let's look at the big picture. Let's let's worry about the mi minuscula later. <laughs> minuscula. I'm trying to say that's a Spanish word. I'm trying to say minutia. <laughs> I don't even think I said it right in Spanish. All right. So what happens here? Negative. It goes into negative. So it goes from what? The one goes from positive to negative. So what negative. does it mean? What does it mean? That's showing the MPV is going down. Right. So the MPV goes okay. down. It's going to be the MPV definitely goes down. We can draw it. We can we can draw it. So now we know how to draw it. So insert chart. Insert chart, what's going on? Insert chart, X, Y scatter. And you can see it here. I'll make it smaller, it's too big. It goes down and it goes down. The pattern of that, because of the shape, the, because of the, yeah, that's not good, it's better like this. Because of the polynomial, because of the function, the way it is, it'll always go in one direction as long as there's just one sign change in the data. And so that's what we saw, I mean, in the cash flows, in the NPV profile. And you see that it crosses here. So, so we look at this and all we care about is that the project is profitable. Is the project profitable? Yeah. Where's the project profitable? At about almost at I'll 15%. No. I don't know. Well, what okay, let, let's let see. This is why I don't like these zeros because it makes it hard to see. Okay, so these are the NPVs up on this vertical axis. So are we making money? Are we making money here? No. How much are we no. making here? We're not making money here. Are we making money here? Probably. No, we're losing money. Well, no, just here. Like how much how much money are we making? We're making between 60, 000. 60,000 to 80,000. Oh, so okay. Here, how much money we're we making here? About 40,000. 40, how much money we're we making here? 20,000. About 20,000. And we have So, what does this mean? It means if if the discount rate is 10%, we make 20,000. If the discount rate is 5%, we make 20,000. Which one did they give us in part two? The second part. Nine percent. So is it profitable at nine percent? Yes. All right. So you could just make the NPV profile and see, aha, well, it's profitable at nine percent. You could you could just plug it in and see that it's profitable at nine percent. But the first part of the question is I asked you for the IRR. So to get the IRR. You could just plug it into Excel, like we talked about equals um, IRR, cash flows, and the guess, or even without a guess, and you would have gotten 16%. But you wouldn't know if the project was profitable unless you plugged in to get the NPV, right? You wouldn't know how to use the IRR. If you just did this problem and you got the IRR, and then for the second part, you just plugged in the 9%, that's okay. You would have had the answer. So back to let, let's let's look at this for a second. Let's take let's take a pause looking at the graph. So 
Let's look at the question again. So the question says, what is the IRR? So Patty just went in, she did the function. It came out 16%. So she found the IRR. She found it. She's done with that question. The next question, would you recommend the investment at a required rate of return of, of 9%? So what you can do is just use the NPV formula to see if 9% gives you a positive. So you could have answered this without doing the NPV profile. Okay. But you wouldn't have been able to link these two because you wouldn't know what's happening between the, if I was to say, use the IRR to recommend it, the project, you know, if I, that was the question, use the IRR to determine if the project is profitable, you would need to, uh, you would need to know where it was positive and where it was negative. The fact that this project is, so this is the trick. The trick is if the first cash flow is a negative and all the rest are positive, we know what the IRR tells us. So we don't need that profile. We don't have to do it in this case. So this is called an investment project. We did discuss this. Uh, when I introduced it, but you may have forgotten. So this is an investment project where the first cash flow is a negative. So are you saying this is not a, you can't use Excel for this? I'm not saying you can. I'm just saying you didn't have to. I, so can I pick your brain how, how she got 16%? Because that's not what I got. Okay, just hold on. So we know it's an investment project because the first cash flow is a negative and the rest are positive. Therefore, so as long as the IRR is greater than 9%, we uh, then the RRR, the required rate of return. What do we do? You we accept. Do it okay, better. we accept. That's I, just, I didn't even, I just basically look at your paper after I did the IRR and then you already gave the rate of return a 9% and I just compare them based on the statement you said it's, in the handout. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's how I answered number two, that part of the question. That's I just all you had to do. I was just following along with TY. Because it was greater than she, it's greater than the nine percent. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah, that's all you had to do. It's just that TY was using Excel and I wanted to, and Romy did too. So I wanted to show them the result oh. there. But you don't have to do that because and the reason you don't have to do that is because it's um an investment project. Okay. So you know what the IRR is telling you automatically. So you don't have to do the, um, you don't have to do anything in Excel for this problem. So, well, for me, it seems I'm totally off because I don't understand um, that we have to like create percentages like what's done right now by Romy. And that's what you were just doing. I don't know. No. If it's an investment project with the first cash flow negative and the rest all positive, then all you do is you get the um, um, hold on, um, you you just get the IRR, and that tells you how profit it tells you the return for the project, and then you compare. You say, is that does that exceed the required rate of return? And the answer is yes, because you get 16% and that's better than 9%. So you would accept in this case. Graphing and everything, that's reserved for when it's not an investment project or a finance project where the cash flows are all in a, in a, in a fixed pattern. An investment project is just like you think, an investment. You spend money and then you make money. 
a finance project is where you, you borrow money and then you have to pay it back and you have to produce the services or the product. And so it's all negative cash flows. In that case, it's the opposite. You treat the IRR like a borrowing rate and you treat your required rate of return as your, um, you want it to be less than the required rate of return. It's the opposite. So anyway, that's what's in the notes. That's what I said there. Uh, so yeah, you didn't have to do the graph, but back to the graph for a second. It tells the story. So if you did the graph, Romy did the graph, TY was doing the graph. Cause I did a lot of graphs. So I, I, I understand why you had an inclination to do the graph, but you didn't have to. And the graph means that you have to get the NPV profile. And uh, I put the I put the data here. I got the NPV profile, and then I made a chart to look at it. But I don't even have to make the chart to look at it. I can see it right here, and I also can see that this is all profitable here. I'll make it green. So as long as as long as the discount rate that the firm uses is in here, it's going to be profitable. That's what we figured out. And that's why this is always above NPV of zero because it's profitable all the way here, all through there. So the 16%, so, okay, now, now to Romy. So what did you get, Romy? You don't get 16% if I do IRR. So equals IRR. And I'm going to touch all of these and 16%. You don't get that. Uh, yeah, I did get that. <laughs> okay. I just, I just, you know what? It, Cause I just did everything the long way. Okay. You didn't finish yet. Yeah. It's okay if you do it but the I long did way. Get, I did get the numbers. I did, like I said, I did the, just like the, the the percentages I just put yeah you did the NPV profile increments right right right, right. you just have different numbers because you use different discount rates which is fine. right okay and it's good you practiced a bit making the formulas copying them okay let's go to number two Ty are you okay with this discussion We basically know as long as the first cash flows are negative and the rest are all positive, we know that we're going to have this pattern. So we don't have to graph or do the profile or anything. We just have to get the IRR. And we know that this is how the project performs, 16% return. And we compare that with the required rate. As long as this exceeds it, great. We beat our benchmark. Or our threshold or our, yeah. All right, number two. Okay, how, how did you guys do on this one? How far did you get? Question for number two. Do we have to have some kind of, um? Are we using the same like percentage for the first one? Because I didn't, I couldn't well, figure it out with that. It's the not percentage. here, right? No, there's no percentage. Uh, there. I didn't write it there. Yeah. So uh, I didn't write it. Okay. So what number did you use? 9%? I didn't know if I should use the, is this the continuation of the first one or do it's, I just create it's a not. Percentage? No, it's a different problem. And I, and I just felt, I forgot the percentage. Um, I think, let me check what it's supposed to be. So I don't have to recreate this. Um, I think it's 12. One second. What did everybody else do? I assumed it was a continuation of the also. So you use 9%? So you use 9%? Mm -hmm. Rhoda? It's fine. <laughs> uh, okay. So we'll just work with 9% if that was the kind of the common thing. So let me add that in here. Um... 
you said to use the payback criterion. Did we have to do a graph for this? Really? No. No. Because even just looking at the figures, you can tell when it pays back or whatever. I don't know. Right. So the payback period is first part. Uh, so when does it pay back? Well, we, we made a calculation in class. That's what we did. We made a calculation. Let me get the notes up again. Here. I can I can I can dictate it if you want. It's two plus the remaining amount. No, no. Let me let me show her. Let me tell her. I don't. Over I the feel like I didn't forget it. I just I just but want to show over, her. It would be over cash flow year two. Payback is two years in A and then in B is 2.5 years. That's what I got without having to do any calculation, really. So I don't know. Well, that's the first part, though. You have to do, so you have to do the remaining, so you have to do two. So in this case, the investment is, um, so that's that's the formula there. The year, the, the last year plus, so the year before it pays out or pays back, plus the remaining amount after that year divided by the cash flow in that year that it pays out. So that's what you have to do. So for this one, well, we couldn't apply that formula to the first part of this project. I don't know, that's what I think. Uh, why not? Because it pays if exactly one fifty. So you just say two in two years, and then you answer the question. It pays back in two years, so you have to say <clears throat> that one pays back in two years. Yes, because and what about the, the other one? Because the, the future value five. there is zero. Because the future value becomes zero in year two, and the future value becomes. Um, zero in two point five in 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 B. Okay, so the question is, which one is better? Use first the payback period criterion. So which find the best? So which one pays back quicker? This a, one pays in two because, years, a, and this one takes years. longer. Yeah. So you can just say this one takes B takes longer than two years, and be done with it. But then I ask you for the discounted payback. So you need to make a so chart. Here I put no rate given. <laughs> well, it's 9%. So if you use 9%, what do you get? So you got to make the table. I don't know what to tell you guys here. Um, you have numbers or some of you use 9% and you have some numbers. I think I did the similar thing I did on the first one. Oh. Where I did the IRR and then oh, I yeah. just graph no. it out. No, you got to use that. Uh, you have to use this thing over here. You have to use this uh, and this one for the discounted. That's what I want you to calculate. So they are Probably neither of them are going to pay back, but I want I want you to calculate the discounted payback period. And I want you to calculate the payback period. So you need to calculate for A and B and then answer the question. Then you need to calculate the NPV for both projects, and then you have to answer why is the NPV better as a decision for making a decision. My answers were in the negative for both, with the NPV. What do you mean in the negative? 
they were in brackets and in red. Mm, this shouldn't be. I got, I got some you, Sorry, did you use 9%? I, okay, let me go to my Excel sheet. Do you want to share it? Patty, did you say something? I didn't use I didn't use any any rate. Oh, you didn't use a rate. Yeah, the because you didn't give me one. You should have asked me. Point zero nine. I guess it's I couldn't make it yesterday. I was stuck in I was stuck in traffic. I, I forgot that you're not supposed to drive. Well, even using nowhere. the rate doesn't change it. It's still a negative answer. Is it? It's still a negative answer. For NPV? Yes. And is it, I think for I the first about? one, but not the second one. Yeah, for the first one I got negative nine point zero nine. The second one I got seventy seven point two seven. Yeah, you got something. And you used the 9%, Patty? No, I didn't use percentage. I calculated my own percentage. I used Google <laughs> to try to help me. Because <laughs> I tried the book and everything, and it was just so... The, the book is crazy. They assume you know stuff. Like... Correct. The book didn't help at all. No, no. Well, you, you were counting on yesterday, and I apologize. I, I really couldn't make it. Um, but anyway, we're doing it now. So, yeah. Um, and I can give you guys another day to, to wrap it up too. Um, so not rushing you tonight to finish. I can give you till tomorrow if that helps. Um, so you got to use, we're going to use 9% Rhoda. You got a negative for the first one and a positive for the second one, right? She stepped away. For the second one. Sorry, I was, I was talking on mute. Oh. Yeah. So a negative for the first one for A and a positive for B. Right? For oh. B, are we only using, because it said the question says something about two years, the cutoff period of two years. Is that the same? Are we using that for everything or? Yes. Like So you're going to calculate. So I want you to calculate the payback period and the discounted payback period for both A and B and then make a decision. And then I want you to calculate the MPP okay. for both and then and make a decision between them. And then I want you to answer why is NPV better than using the payback period or discounted payback period rule like we talked about in class. The question I got stuck on this was, given that it's two years, do you need to calculate also to year three as well? Uh, it's a good point. If if you need year three, then it's already going to be rejected. It's true, right? If it's a cutoff, that's what two. I had to do. I remember I had to go to year three calculations. Uh, in the discounted one, in the part two, in this part, Patty here. Yeah, I think it was in there. I had to go to year yeah. three. So you know it's you know it's not going to you know it's going to fail, but I still want you to calculate it. So calculate it and just make your conclusion at the end. But yeah, definitely if it's outside of 2, then you know it's going to reject it, but just make the calculation for practice. Okay? But yeah, in practical terms, neither of the projects pay back in two years for the discounted payback. And project A pays back using the payback period without discounting. Anyway, it's just practice. Just practice for you guys. So nobody did number three or nobody was interested in number three. That's my favorite question. It just looks too long. Is that it? I'm beginning to feel totally lost. For me, I tried to do everything, but I don't know. And but I feel like totally lost. I did try to do number three, but I'm not sure of anything anymore. 
Okay. So you're still lost after we talked about one and two? Yes, because it seems like all the assignments is just based on one particular class that I don't know. No, this was I the sent other you day. all my work. So I would like to wait after class so we could go over things, if that's okay. I, I would appreciate it if we talk about it in class now because it's going to be nine o'clock and I have grading to do. I have other things to do. If you can mention it now, if we can get through okay. this. Well, okay. I did try number three. Okay. So it was the profitability index questions, right? Uh, for number three, Use the profitability index to determine the more profitable investments given your organization need for capital rationing. Okay. So, so you need to calculate the profitability index for each of these. So I did all, all three. Um, and you the first option me? gave me $1.05. The second gave me one point zero seven. If I was using two decimal points, like you said, it would look like the two, the second and third option gave me the same thing, but it's really not. Oh, if you have to go to three decimals? Yeah. That's okay. So I feel based on um, the more profitable, whatever is the number three. Remember, it's number two rather, the middle one, followed by number three and lastly one. That's what I wrote, I don't know. Okay, you, you sent it to me, you said? I sent it to you. But I was obviously off in one and two, so don't look at number one and two right now in front of everybody. I can't get into my email right now for some reason. Okay. See if I can get my phone. I'm sorry, Professor. If no one went over three, can we go to another one and then go back to three? Yeah, I'm thinking about that too. I just want to take a, a peek at what she did and then I'll come back. I, I know what you mean, Patty. But also, I do want you guys not to be scared of this question. <laughs> Uh, you should be able to do this question too. Okay, I'm just staring at what you did and it looks like, okay. Um, okay, the problem, one problem I see here is you have to remember that in Excel, the NPV formula gives you the present value of future cash flows. So you just use that. And um, because the way it is, and let me show you. So the formula, All right, so this is what I did in class. I don't know if you looked at these notes, TY, but it's all here in the notes. So all I did was NPV, just the NPV formula divided by the initial outlay. I think uh, I had- That's what I did. Well, you added back, you did this here, but when you use um, 
Excel, Excel. I don't know. I, I'm unfortunately Excel. When you say NPV in Excel, it's it can it's just the present value of future cash flows. It does not include the initial cash flow. It's not like the NPV formula. When I say give me the NPV formula, you say initial outlay plus, and then you start doing the discounting. The okay. NPV formula in Excel gives you automatically the present value of future cash flow. So that's all you have to do, and then divide it. So okay, you're, so you're I on the right all track. The five hundred thousand that I added. Yeah, you have to, you have to not add that, and then okay, yeah, on each of them. And think okay, of, okay, but you're on the right track, and then you take the one that's highest. Okay. All right, you have to make sure that you've spent all your money. That's the other catch because you need to spend. Uh, you have how much? Uh, one million dollars. So you have one million dollars. For one million dollars, you can do one and two, or you can do three, project three. So you're gonna see which one, which how they rank. Okay. And let me know if you have a question, any more questions about once you've got the calculations. Okay. okay. So you're 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 right there. You're close. I guess it's just frustrating because you're not just finishing it, and it. I guess that's what's happening. But you're you you've got it almost figured out. Okay, number four then, right? You have an opportunity to buy a piece of diagnostic equipment for the following terms. 1.285 million expected useful life. Okay, so what, what do you do here? Professor, what is the Marx formula or M -A -R -C -M -A -C -R formula? You know what? I maybe I think I put it in there when we did the capital budgeting. Remember that was in week. Um, let me see. The capital budgeting was week six. Budgeting concepts, course materials. I think we did it week week five. So I think it was week four, no, capital budgeting. No, this was techniques. Anyway, I, I must have given it to you. Let me let me go back. So where we did the MRI, purchasing the MRIs, that was in week four. Quality video. Six. The date we did MRI was 10, 11, 23. I don't remember which week that was, but that was October 11th. Yeah, I have the dates on here. October 11th. Week Professor, do we need an NPV? Are you, do we need the cash inflow to calculate the NPV for number four? For number four, uh, we're going to do it the way, okay, hold on. Um, it was October 11, week seven, we did an exercise with purchasing the MRIs and the maker's table is there in week seven. Um, I think I should add more notes there, but without describing them, it's not going to mean too much, I think. So let's see. Um, I don't know. I have to share this. So here is the makers here, Patty, you see? Slow. 
I remember, but those were just numbers. It didn't mean much to me when I look at it. Right. So we use those numbers. We use those numbers to do what? So go back to the markup and see what we did there. So, you know, we just did one case. So maybe it wasn't ingrained in your head, but if I give you more, that's, you know, we lose time. So we're going to work with the one case. I can give you uh, the tidy notes. So this was the case. Remember we read all this stuff. It was a whole page. Um, in this problem, it's just a few sentences, but so I simplified all of this for the assignment. Uh, so iPad markup. Okay. So this is, this is what we did. Remember? So we did income investment. This is where you use the makers. You remember this? We made, we figured out depreciation using those values that gave us the rates for depreciation. So you're supposed to use the five year depreciation schedule to figure out what's left. Do you vaguely remember this? You remember what we did here? No, I remember, but based on the question that we had, I, you gave so much more information on the other one that I, I couldn't figure out. Relate. Okay. To yeah, relate so, this. yeah, this is so much easier. So, okay, let, let's, let's read it and highlight like we did in class. Okay. So I'm going to, we're going to read it and highlight it like we did in class with colors. So, all right, you have an opportunity to buy a new piece of diagnostic equipment for the following terms, $1,285,000. So this is going to be part of what? Income, investment, or tax shields as a result of depreciation. So look back at what we did before and tell me if that goes into income, investment, or tax shields. That's the thing. You eliminate the, the cost of the item when you did the, the work. I eliminate, I depreciated the item, right? You said it was it was two million, but you crossed out. You that's a sunk cost. You cost you the cost sunk cost. Yeah, that's what I have in my notes. Oh, this is not a sunk cost. This is what you're buying. So what did we buy? We bought the MRI. So this is like the buying the MRIs. So this is the investment. Okay. So I make it green. So I make it green, and then we're supposed to use the five year depreciation schedule. That's extra information. So I'm just going to make it, I mean, I can just make it green too. And then uh, I say there's no networking capital. There's, uh, that's all I tell you. I don't tell you anything else. Operating, uh, what is the NPV of this capital investment? So from here, so the five five year depreciation, I put it in blue. Oh yeah, I put it in blue because this goes in the tax shields. So basically what we're saying is we're gonna see if it's worth buying this equipment because we're gonna get we're gonna get the equipment and then we're going to use the depreciation to reduce our taxes. And let's see if just like that, even if it doesn't make even if the diagnostic equipment doesn't make us any money. Is it going to be profitable? And some companies do that. They just go and spend their budget like before the end of the year. And, you know, because it's better to spend it, spend what they have than to lose it. And maybe they'll make a profit because of being able to depreciate. So that's all, all you have to do is the investment part and the tax shield. You don't have to do anything with income. So can I give you guys 10 minutes to think about that? I'll work on that. Did anybody start? Can we? Can I talk about what I did? Yeah. So I had to go through because the book didn't give a formulas, but I found oh. this formula. It's the first year of depreciation. It, it equals the cost times one divided by the useful life, which yeah, is you, you don't have to do that because you have the maker's table. You use those from the table that you don't have to come up with the percentage and the. The numbers of the of the maker's 
tell you what to do. You just copy what we did in class. So let me see. But yeah, you can go one by one and make the, the percentages, but this is much easier. Patty, if you have to go to Google, you should just write me an email. It's, I don't want you wasting your time there. It's good to learn off Google, but you can sometimes get confused. Okay, All right. So say if we use the this tape, the mark table, because I had that as well and I looked at it and meant nothing. Yeah, yeah. So, so this one, in this one, I use the seven year, but we're going to use the five year. So you take the five years. How do you know to put what depreciation rate to put in? Because it says five year. So oh, take, so basically, if we use the table, we just automatically go to five years and use those exact numbers. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. So you just use the exact numbers. You, you don't have to calculate. If you did calculate them, you should. Anyway, it depends. Because if the makers are very special, they've calculated it here to make it so easy. All you do is follow what I have here. Oh, sorry. Uh, you follow what I do here. Just see this. All you have to do is take the little D and multiply it by the expenditure, the investment, the cost of the equipment, the original cost. That's all you do across each year. So for done. each year, just... Mommy. each stop baby for each year just go to year five and multiply across by the 1.285 yes and so this d is always the same number because that's what you gave us uh the d is changing the little d is here on from the table the maker's table mm -hmm. and the big d is going to be your one you're always going to use the number of 1,285,000 yeah that's what i was asking yeah so, yeah you said d but i i know what you meant so yeah that's okay. going to be always the same cost of capital times the rate all the way down and you finish so basically that. every time i multiply i'm multiplying the small d goes up to the top go to the top d mm -hmm. which is the 1.825 mm -hmm. right one point yeah 285 yeah What's okay mean? can you guys try that and then we'll regroup in 10 minutes Okay. Okay. Try that. And we'll be back here. Let's say 7.15. Oh, what is that? 10 minutes? Yeah. 7.20. I'm going to get a, some water.
professor. How's it going? Any questions? Yes. How did you find the UCC again? Um, let me see. How did I find the UCC? Oh, so UCC means undepreciated cost of capital. Mm -hmm. So you take the original value and you subtract off the depreciation. Basically, it's going down in value because it's depreciating. So you start with, uh, in this case... <clears throat> Can I ask a question though? Wait, yeah, just one second. Yeah. Four million, then minus the D. Oh, okay. So for and then case... and then just keep going down. Okay, so it's, it was the one, two, eight, five million minus the D. Right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, T Y. Um, so you're saying that we should use the values that you have here, 0 0.143, 0 0.245? No, no, don't use those values. That's not the right set of values. It's just this is the method. The values are from over here, the Makers Accelerated Cost Recovery System. These are the values that I'm saying you should use. I put it in brackets. And you want to use the five-year rates. So you're going to use 0.2. Patty, you use the right numbers, right? 0 0.2, 0 0.32, 0 0.1. Yes, I went to year five. Yeah. Go to year five, five year. Yeah, those numbers. So I'm glad I asked you guys. So yeah, use those numbers and you're going to determine, you're going to fill in that table. Um, so you're going to put the numbers here. You're going to get the big D here. You're going to get the UCC, which I don't think we need that actually, but you can just finish the table. What you need is the tax shields and the tax shields are the tax savings because you're going to deduct the D as an expense, because that's what accountants and financial managers can do. You can deduct this as an expense in each year. And that results in a tax savings. So you don't have to pay so much tax because you reduce your disposable or your taxable income. So to get that number, you have to take the tax rate times the big D and calculate these for five years. It's well, no, sorry, what's, what are we looking at? Oh, five years. So we're gonna do a five year, we're gonna imagine it's a five year project with five years of depreciation. Where did you get the t tax credit from? The tax, oh, we need the tax rate. Wow, it's not in here. So weird. I'm getting these, Not. I actually got these numbers from the book and I modified them. So the tax rate is not here. So I'll just make it 40% tax rate. It has to be given. That's the TC and that's the TC? Yeah, C for corporate. If you are a, um, if you don't pay taxes, you won't even experience this. So that's another. So I, I have to assume it's a a for-profit operation. Um, yeah, I, I took these questions from the book and I didn't think the book prepared anyone to answer them. So that's why I did all the background. We did, we spent three, three classes on this stuff. So it's not like I just put it all together in one assignment.
So yeah, you have um I'm just modifying the questions a bit. So there's no benefit for a not-for-profit because they're not going to be paying taxes and they're not going to be. It wouldn't, that's the analysis wouldn't make sense. Is everybody trying this? Everyone wanted to do four? Yes. Okay. Lydia, you sent me yours. Are you done with your assignment or are you still working on it? Did you want me to look at yours? Yes. Okay. You worked hard. I'm not saying others didn't, but I mean... Looks like you're, you did a lot of work here. Did you do discounted payback as well? Or just payback? Lydia. Uh, which number, Professor? For number two, did you do number the two. discounted payback or just the payback? Oh, so you're going to be okay. All right, it looks like you did discounted. All right, second. And you didn't do the NPV. Anyway, answer all, make sure you answer all the questions. You're, you're almost there. You just got to finish number two. When we do the MPV, are we entering the value that's in D? Uh, for this problem? Okay, so, okay, so, uh, you see, you see the uh, example, right? Yeah. So, um, to get the, so what you're going to do is, you have to take, you have to, okay, there's two cash flows that you're interested in. First, the investment cash flow, the negative 1,285,000 and the net present value <clears throat> of the tax shields. So once you get the tax shields, you got to do the NPV of them. Okay, so we're doing the tax shields of the N the NPV of the tax shield. Those, the NPV, those well, what you can use, you can use this as your initial cash flow. So this would be a negative, and then these as your revenues and make an NPV with uh anyway, like in Excel, we're gonna use this is the, these are the future cash flows. So you're gonna do the NPV of the future cash flows plus negative or whatever, negative 1.285 million. That's what you want to do. So the tax shield is the future cash flows. The tax shields, you want to do the, the tax shields of the, you want to get the present value of the future cash flows. The cash flows that you use are the tax shields. Okay.
Rhoda, did you do this one? So it's really just an exercise for practice, but in the end, um, you'll see, you'd have to make something else. It's not enough just to have that equipment. Um, yeah, 12%. Have to, I should add something about selling it at the end. But anyway, it's just to make you practice that one table. That's, that was the exercise. So Lydia, I'm going back to looking at yours. Sorry, so to get the final, mm -hmm. so to get the final answer in this whatever, you want us to add all the UCC? Not the UCC. I want you to use the tax shields. The UCC is not, um, We probably... Sorry, so how do we get the, the tax shield again? I'm sorry. Okay, you see here? There's yes. a formula here. Use that. Mm -hmm. That will give you the tax shield. It's the depreciation amount times the tax rate. That surprisingly tells you how much you're going to save in taxes each year. So we're doing... I don't know what the TC stands for. That's what we are at the last. Corporate tax rate. The corporate tax rate. And I gave it. 12%? I just, I, no, the corporate tax rate is higher. It's 40%. I just put it on the page earlier. Oh, it's 40%. Okay. Uh, I just made it 40% because it was missing. Okay. So this, this table is all you have to practice here. And um, What do you get for the, did you get the book value? What do you mean book? Well, this here in the UCC is the book value. So that's the remaining value of the um, 
asset after you. So the idea is for tax purposes, as an incentive to investment and growing businesses, the government allows you the opportunity to reduce your taxable income by the wear and tear of any assets you have, like any capital, any equipment. So this is the process of doing that. So you're reducing, you're finding out if you're going to use this schedule of depreciation, it's going down and down and down in value. And the in your books, in the accounting books, there's a record of the value of the asset. Oh. So that's the book value that you're going to get out of that table. And then and you can also get it by taking the value of the asset and subtracting everything in D. But anyway, we create that information here year by year. So by the end of the project, we're going to have five years. Yes. And uh, we can depreciate it. So you're saying the UCC on the fifth year is the book value? Is that what you're saying? That would be the book value in the fifth year. How much is it? I have 1137225. One, one, two, two, it's still a million? Yeah. Hmm. I thought 223,648. Yeah, Tway, you did something wrong because it's much smaller. So tell me, Patty, 200? 223,648 and 70 cents. Okay, thanks. But you said we get the UCC by removing the value from capital and from here, those the big d from the initial amount that's what you said well and then you get a new rate and you a new uh, so in the first year you take the amount which in this case was four million and you subtract d and then you get a new balance this is that balance of the asset the asset now after year one is worth three million four hundred twenty eight thousand in this table. In the second year, you depreciate 980,000. So you subtract that from this and you put that here. So, oh, yeah. The only time you keep using the number is in this, in this table. In the first and one. In this row, this column, one. in the first one. So, okay, I'm glad we cleared that up. So you're going to be left with an asset worth $223,000. Oh, well, anyway, Patty did it right. <laughs> Can anyone else confirm that value? No. Hey, hey, stop using the wife. So you using the wife's for? Give it to me. You finish? Close it properly. Thank you. Okay, good boy. No, hold on to it. You need to get the tissue and blow your nose now. Blow your nose in the wife's. Blow your nose in the wife's and I'll play with you. <laughs> so I'm um, I'm sorry. Can you explain something again to me? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. So for instance, in this example, the initial cost was um four million, right? And we removed five seventy two thousand from it. We got three four two eight thousand. And here on the second year, you did um. The depreciation rate zero point two five times. I I am confused about all of. Okay, that. it's confusing because I'm showing you different numbers. Let me let me just put it in Excel if that helps. So this is what you should have. Patty just sent me something. Patty, that's yours, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll compare. What Wait, isn't do? the capital not to confuse everyone? But isn't the capital one million? Not four million. Two hundred and eighty. Yeah. Yeah, that was just an example in the class, and I'm referring well, to it because that's we're, all we we're have. referring back to the example 
the class example. Yeah, okay. I was just using it as a, as an okay. example, but that's not, yeah, ours was not that. All right, so um, let me show you my Excel. Uh, where was I? I have tax shield. I'm just still struggling with calculating mm -hmm. CC, but it's okay. So let, let me, let me clear it up. So year, so just to make it clear, there's no depreciation until the end of the first year, right? So these are all end of years, one, two, um, Patty did too many years. If you're going to, I did, I, I don't think the question is clear, so it's okay. Um, Patty used all the years, um, but it's one, two, three, four, and, and five, let's say, let's say, um, okay, we'll use all the years. I didn't, in that example in class, I only did a four-year project, but notice from the maker's table, let's look at the maker's table for a moment. They give you the way that it's created is if you're going to use this table, you're going to go more than one year. Okay. So we're, because um, the pattern here is to do straight line depreciation. So it goes down steadily. These numbers are calculated to simplify the calculation. So all you're doing every time is multiplying this by the cost of capital, the initial investment. And then you have to go to the sixth year because I didn't give you any information about what to do with the asset. Um, so this will complete, this should completely go to zero if you did it right. If you used all of this. So Patty did something Oh, you have to wrong. go to six years. Well, I didn't tell you what to do at the, I didn't tell you. So if I tell you the, or if you have it in mind that you're going to sell it at some point, you would put that in. But I made it super simple. So you just use all the years here to completely depreciate the 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 asset using you know your option in in accounting and for taxation so you 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 use everything here for the 5 year table and Patty was right she did that but uh but she should have gotten zero cuz it should completely eliminate the asset's value so something went wrong so that's how you know you did it right if it goes to zero so um so I have six years. I'm going to go back to my Excel. I'm going to copy out those numbers. Or oh, you can read them to me. I can. Point zero, two. Yeah, one zero point two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two zero point three two. Yeah, uh -huh. three zero point one nine two. Yeah, yeah. four zero point one one five. Yeah, five zero point one one five. Yeah. Then zero point zero five eight. So basically they use a straight line depreciation, they use a straight line schedule. And without explaining, you can't really see that here, but at the end there's some extra left over and you just depreciate the last bit to eliminate it completely. So this is the this is little d. And then in this column, we get big D, which is equal to little d times every time you multiply it by one, two, eight, uh, two, eight, five. Okay. Oh, so I'll just use the, the Excel. I'll go here and multiply it by one, two, eight, five, one, two, three, and copy it all the way down and make them dollars so it's easier to look at. And that's okay. what I got. Okay. I'm okay till that point. Next one. And then the UCC, I'll okay. make a little equation. You guys can write it down or I probably should write it down. Because we always forget. Okay, so it's going to be the, I say UCC, the original balance, basically. Under, UCC stands for undepreciated cost of capital. Or old, I'll just say the old. And then you want to subtract it 
by D in that year. So that's our little formula. So you're going to say for the first one, you have to go one, two, eight, five, zero, 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 minus this amount. Mm -hmm. okay. And then in the next one, you're going to, so this is how okay. you set up the formula. You take that one minus this one. Wait. Oh, so it becomes one, zero, two, eight minus that one. Okay. And it should end with zero. Okay. If you use the whole table. So something, Patty, did you get zero at the end or did you stop? You said we didn't need to find UCC, so I stopped finding UCC. Oh, okay, okay. That's yeah. yeah. yeah you you don't you don't. Okay, okay. But when I asked for the book value, that's that was to check. So it should go to zero if you did everything right. So, yeah, my values that I sent you. That's the TC times D. Yeah, you skipped and to then the tax shield. So, yeah, yeah, those values I got, I found the at the MPV. Okay. Yeah, it looks like you did everything right. So that's TC times or TCD. All right. Can you, can you just, just go over for UCC, like year one and two once more? Yeah. So I guess that you're originally subtracting it from. So I'm, I'm, I'm all I, there's the logic here is it's just the balance. So if you lost 257,000 in value, you have to take it off. So I'll put the formula here. I'll put the formula for you. Does that make more sense? So I'm going to move this over. Okay, so then the next one would be. And the next one would is... be the value inside box D2 minus. Exactly. The value in, okay, C3. So, yeah, don't lose sight of what we're doing. As the, the formula should help you. They shouldn't confuse you. But, uh, yeah, what we're doing is we're depreciating the value of the asset in an accounting way that we're allowed to according to the IRS. But in reality, I don't know if it lost 400 thousand dollars worth of value but that's what it looks like in the second year okay if i have zero now yeah so it's it's down to zero so <clears throat> so the tax shields will be the tax rate 0.4 times the depreciated amount because so each year you get to do that so the tax shield is um, um so i got those numbers yeah <clears throat> and then Can I... mm -hmm. okay i have the numbers actually good by the end of the last one Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, one, two, one, six, four, one, eight. Something was wrong. I did something wrong. Yeah, so that's, yeah. Yeah, so I got the tax shield. Romy, are you good? Lydia? You following? Barbara? Yep. Yes. But I did the, um, the multiplication on my phone and I just put the numbers in Excel because I wasn't sure how to put the <laughs> asterisk. Okay, yeah, that multiplication is an asterisk. Very good, yeah. So yeah, yeah you, that's when you, you see it, you won't see it, yeah. <clears throat> it's okay.
And finally, we're going to do the NPV, right? So it's going to be negative 1285000 plus NPV with, uh, what did I say? 12%? Sorry, can I ask 40%. how you did the... Which? Can I ask how you got your the column six under tax shield? For some reason, I'm not getting it. The last value? Yeah, the 29812. So I just, uh, it's this, it's D times. I got it. Thank you. Okay, so as good as the huh? It's, I, I'm coming, I'm trying to redo something. It showed me false. Um, I don't know why it said that. Um, so let me see. Um, the NPV you calculated. Okay, I have it now. Okay. I feel like I did something wrong. Is it too many? One to zero plus twelve to zero. I thought we're using forty percent. I did use forty percent. Oh, for the discount rate? No, no, those are different, right? The discount rate, the the required rate of return is used in the NPV. Ah, uh, and that was twelve percent. And it was twelve. Yeah, that's where I did my booble. So, you know, there is value in doing these problems because you're going to clear up what's what, I think, I hope. So you have 12% um, these are the amounts, the tax shield amounts. Well, I'll just copy the formula so you can see it. Wait. Okay. So all the values you're using is a tax shield. Okay. Yes. All we, yeah, that's all I'm going to use in the NPV. I'm not using anything else. I'm going to use the cost, the initial cost of the equipment, and I'm going to offset it with the, the present value of future cash flows that accrue as a result of buying that equipment. I didn't say anything about revenues that I could accrue from this uh this piece of equipment. The they just, uh... But I just asked you to get the NPV. So the NPV is uh, is negative. So, so if you just base it on the NPV rule, you shouldn't buy this. But if you make revenues of over, you know, a million dollars because of that equipment, you should. I haven't included any of that here. So basically you're finding out what is the the real cost? So the fact that you can reduce your tax burden yeah. <laughs> makes you think that, okay, well, it's not really yeah. worth 1.285 million. It's really worth 905,000. So that that's that's the, the that's what I'm trying to get you to see here. that the fact that you're allowed to do this, means that, okay, so it's not really 1.285 million, it's 905,000. And so if I can make a million bucks, it's worth it. If I can, if I can sell it at the end for something and then make a million dollars over this five, you know, five or six year period, okay, it's worth it. Yeah. Even, even though also the other thing to think about, so these are just the, the things to consider in your books, on the books, it's worth nothing by the six, end of the sixth year, but you can probably still sell it. It's probably still useful and you can sell it for something. You'd have to pay taxes on the sale, but that's another thing to consider. And I didn't put any of that here because I didn't want to make it complicated. I just wanted you to make the table to go through the routine and realize that the real, the real value of that 
of making that purchase is a $905,000. That's the real cost of it. Okay, so in terms of getting the numbers, that's one piece, but it's also understanding what you got, okay? Interpreting. What I could add to the week, uh, week seven, where we did this exercise is I can add, um, I have some notes where it's just like, it's the same problem though and it's just step by step but i could i could append those or put those up as well okay it's almost eight o'clock so i think which which other well i mean we can probably do two or three we only have we're on which one are we doing right now four we're in four five six seven eight nine okay well we have time Any questions? Did anybody pick five in the end? I I I attempt I tried to attempt everything. Like, like very I good, said. very good. But Where are we now, Patty? I didn't do five. I attempted six. Yeah, we can we can uh we can skip five if no one's done it. But I'd like you to try it. I did five, but I I don't think I used all the methods. I did five. Okay, I'll look at I'll look at five. Uh, let's go through six. Okay. And uh, I'll look at your five and during okay. a break or something too. I okay, new home care agents. Okay, are we moving to six, everyone? Romy, yes, you okay, Barbara, to move to six, Rhoda, yes, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. New home care agency expects to make average pension payments of ten thousand dollars a year for 25 years for a staff nurse who just retired. If the agency's discount rate is 12%, what is the maximum lump sum amount the agency should be willing to pay today to have an independent insurance company assume the burden of future payments? What did you use? I used FB. Uh, no, but I close. I actually just used um like a, a simple math. Okay, what did you do? I did the 10,000... Sorry, my son is thing. I use ten thousand times twenty five years times twelve percent, which give you thirty thousand in the end, and I subtract that from the two hundred and fifty thousand, which the lump sum is two twenty. Where's the two hundred fifty thousand? Oh, that's the two hundred fifty thousand you got. Yeah, after twenty five years, it would pay out the okay. two hundred fifty thousand. But, but Patty, you completely forgot about discounting, and time value of money. So you have to include that. So, okay, so. So what formula can we use for this, Jen? To say it's not. 
Well, you mm -hmm. guys tell me, what did you do, Rhoda? Did you do this one? Yeah, I did. Um, ten thousand twenty-five years, twelve percent. Sorry, I'm just flipping through my notes. What I do? <laughs> Let me see if I can find something in the notes I gave you. So this is this goes back to what we learned at the beginning. Is it the PMT? Was it supposed to be the PMT function? No. Okay, close. So you and TY, yeah, you guys are like remembering we did this before, something like it. So yes, that's around. That's not the correct one, but it's one of those functions. Patty forgot to use the time value of money concept, but still a valiant attempt. We can Patty say what she did again um, when she computed it manually? Yeah, but she didn't. She didn't include discounting at all. She didn't think about discounting at all. So that's why she got it wrong. So do you want? Do you think we should use the net present value? Um. Just that it didn't. I didn't think that some the whatever I got was. Lump enough, that's why I decided to use the FV. What the lump sum enough? Okay, so I'm just going to show just to remind you okay. what we learned back then. So this is from week two. Um, let me share. It's is it the PV? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be PV because PV equals PMT. Uh huh. That formula. Yeah. It's an annuity. Okay. I think insurance is an annuity. In insurance or in when you're thinking about payments, let me show you the picture. So it's like this, right? Remember this? Oh, yes. This was a loan. But it was a different context, but this was the the pattern. So you can multiply to get the number of uh it, it was by years, right? So um 25 years, a hundred uh ten like average pension payments of ten thousand a year. It's not a lot of money, but okay. Uh, a year for 25 years. She makes a small pension from this employment. So she's getting ten thousand dollars. So this guy got a hundred. He had to pay a hundred. Anyway, the context irrelevant. Just look at the timeline. So for her, it would be ten thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand, and it would be for how many years? Twenty five years. Twenty five years. So it's PV. The rate twenty five. Mm -hmm. It would you can put a minus or a plus in this case, um, we have to pay it right. That's what the, so our position is we're the agency and we have to pay that. So we're making those payments. So you can put a negative, and then remember what this meant. We no FV. We're not interested in FV. We put a zero. We don't want the future value. We want the current value of it, present value, and then end of year payments zero and that's how you find that answer so we did this before so that'll give you the present value lump sum amount of what it's worth today so that we can pass that money to an insurance company and not have to deal with her
uh, the payments to her. And then, but just to confirm, you see where it's 10%, I mean, it would be for us, it would be 12. Exactly. So it would be point, point 0.12. Yeah. So 25, because 25 years, um, with the minus 10,000 and then yeah. zeros because we're not interested in. We want the end of the year payments. Well, let me make sure. Payments a year. Okay, so if it doesn't say anything, you assume they're end of year payments. I'd like to pay today to have any different. If it says that she needs to be paid at the beginning of the year, then you have to put a one there because okay. that's the beginning of period, but it doesn't say anything. So you do end of period. So then it'll be zero, zero or zero, one. Yeah, it's zero, zero. Well, end of period was zero, right? Like, what does it say in Excel? It tells you something there. It says- uh, End of period is zero. Yeah, so go with that. 78,431. Yeah, can that's you- That's a nine. You guys confirm? Okay, so that's- Yes, what I have that as well. Okay, so it's, so what did you get, Patty, when you just calculated? What did you- Oh, I got- way more <laughs> okay. I think it was okay yeah no no so <laughs> you see this is a better answer <laughs> because the value it's not just even yeah it's not 250 because um the value of ten thousand dollars in 20 years is not ten thousand today it goes down right because of the time value of money money in the future is not worth the same that it is today. I'm trying to plug it in an Excel and I'm getting like too many with the function. Do you think I'm inputting it incorrectly? Do you want to show us? Um sure. I just don't know how to do that. Ooh. Share. Okay. Um, where is it? Share screen. Right? Desktop one. Mm -hmm. Can you see my screen now? I'm not yet. Okay. Um. Can you see now? No. What are you pressing? I don't know. I clicked share and then it had me put in my password. Oh. Um, maybe because I didn't have the feature. Oh, what are you using? Um, net, Today I'm using them. Oh, here it's coming. It's coming. Oh. All right. So this was, I tried to do. Oh, what? you put an equals okay so let's see so okay take away that comma at the end okay now oh there you go okay. so yeah see, 250,000 is not the answer right um because you need to discount and that's what it's worth okay okay so make sure you answer end up answering the questions that I asked. Don't just make calculations. I don't know what I asked. I just said what, okay, so then this is the amount that you would have to give to the insurer to assume the burden. Yeah, the payout. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah. All right, so that one's done. Give you guys a few minutes. Hospice, new hospice is building an extension. It can use single pane glass windows that cost. Did anybody pick this one? Um, okay, let's see. Cost a hundred dollars each, or it can buy double pane windows that cost a hundred and fifty dollars each. The windows should last twenty years before they must be replaced. The hospice expects that heating costs will be lowered by five dollars per year for each double pane window. 
the hospice can borrow or invest money at 10%. Use the profitability index to determine which type of window they should, they should buy. They should buy. Should it buy? I don't know what happened here. They should buy. Hello? Yeah. So I used the profitability index. I did. I did. Oh, you sent it to me, right? You sent yeah, it. I sent it to you. Okay, let me look at what you did. Oh, I did the same thing that I did before. Did that? Yeah. Add in the initial yeah, whatever. Yeah, remember that the NPV is not the real NPV. It's just the present value of future cash flows in Excel. Okay. So I'll just remove the added the initial amount. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So for this one, we had to calculate the proper, um, the profitability index for single panel windows and also for the double panel mm -hmm. whichever sense. whichever yielded higher so the whole point is you got to put together the cost and the benefit right so the cost is a hundred dollars for the double sorry single pane is a hundred dollars and oh. the double pane is 150 but the double pane will reduce your costs by five dollars uh -huh. a year. So you're gonna pay a hundred dollars each. I didn't say how many windows there are, but that's okay. Um I didn't think it was significant, the five dollar a year. Mm. Well, it you gotta you gotta put it together though and and show that um Rhoda right I just did it well I just did um five times twenty again you can't do that you have to use well, the time value of money yeah uh, use the annuity keep in mind the problem we just did two hundred and fifty thousand dollars which was twelve times. Sorry, which was 25 times 10,000 wasn't even close to what it was really worth today, right? 78,000. So the same thing with the $5. Okay. But so you need to you need to use an annuity for that, for those $5. But I know I didn't you do the annuity, but I still got that the double panel window index was higher higher. <laughs> I know I answered the question correctly, but the way that I computed it didn't. Yeah, you you, you can't just get the right answer. You have to do the calculation. Okay. okay, so so you gotta so so make a timeline for yourself just so you can stare at it and then put it together. Uh, Romy, what do you have there? What did you do? I'm still working on mines because I'm getting crazy numbers too, but I put it? everything, you... I have everything, I have it on a different computer. Let me see if oh, I can yeah. show you. <laughs> it's hard because I'm on my laptop and can on my Can you take a picture computer. and send it to me? Because I'm not going to see it like that, but try or take a screenshot and send it to me so I can stare at it. So I want you guys to try it before I just give you the answer. I know you did try it, but Rhoda, you did it wrong. And yeah. I'm good. I was looking at TYs. Okay, yeah, I didn't finish looking at it. Uh, okay, the pain. Oh, yeah. So she did it wrong because she did. Um, oh, she ignored the five dollars. You can't ignore the five dollars. So, can you $5 tell me how to account years. for the five dollars? I think cost would be lower five dollars for each. So, you're you're figuring out the profitability index for each window pane 
well, what's $5 worth? What's $5 annuity for 20 years? Just figure that out. And then you can decide if you're going to forget the $5. Like you need to figure out about the $50 difference. Is the savings going to make $50, the extra $50 worth it? That's what you're trying to figure out. So the five times 20 is not, you know, it's not a hundred dollars. But you remember here, we don't even have the number of the windows. It doesn't matter. It, it feels weird, but it doesn't matter because you're just going to do it per window. So you just need to know per window if it's worth it. Right. Okay. So I couldn't, I mean, I just, I, is it because I didn't do the annuity for the 20 didn't years? Do the annuity before? for the $5. So you need to figure out. So the cost is going to be one fifty, but the benefit is $5 for 20 years. You got to figure out what that's worth. Okay. So that's going to offset your cost. The single pane is just a hundred bucks, just a hundred bucks. Now, 150 is going to be offset by the $5 annuity for 20 years. You got to find out if that's $50 or more. You just got to figure out what it is because it's not. We can't, we can't calculate the 20 times five. You cannot do that just for the same reason that we couldn't times 10,000 by 25 because you're completely ignoring time value of money. The $5, if you did five times 20, the answer is clear. It's a hundred bucks. Yeah. So it's totally worth the double paying. You gotta make sure though, that you, you're not ignoring time value of money because $5 in 20 years is not worth $5. So you need to get the annuity of the $5. Is that the PV? Uh-huh. Okay. I'm just, just, just what we just did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to um run it, run the numbers myself now, but. um, And remember you want to do this for, you want to get the profitability index. So yeah, you can get the NPV or remember you just want to get the, anyway, I would just get the NPV, but in the end to get the profitability index, you just use the present value of future cash flows. So plus the initial cost. Anyway, the present value of future cash flows. So all you really have to put in this equation is um, yeah, no. Okay. So the present value of future cash flows. Anyway, I'll let you guys figure it out. I don't want to just give it to you. It's better if you struggle a little bit. I'll give you five minutes to struggle before a we little bit. Struggle a little bit more. A little bit? I struggle a little right. bit more. Yeah. It's, simple, it's, it's mind boggling because they're simple numbers, but you got to put them in the right place to get the right answer. I'm plugging it in now on. Um, okay. Um, so that's profitability index. And then. So TY after, because we're going to stop at like 830. Um, TY, I can look at your problems i'll look at the ones that we didn't discuss okay okay thank you well we can go after 8 30 but i think most people are going to be burnt out if they aren't already mm -hmm. So for eight, you have to do the mutually ex mutually exclusive uh, analysis. Or you can calculate the NPV of both. I think I left it open for you for number eight. So that should be. I did NPV of both. Okay. That one you don't have any questions about? Professor. Yes. For number seven, because it's. The project, the first project with um, the single pane, it only gives you a cash flow at the third year, but then the second. Um, no, uh, the for the no for the first pro for the okay. So let's underline this. So that's the single plane gas window cost. Okay, hundred. So that one's just a hundred dollars. That's it. 
Mm-hmm. That's the cost. And then this one is 150, but it's not 150 because you need to offset that with the present value of $5 for 20 years. So those go together. Let me change the color. No, but I'm saying the cash flow for each so present one. present value of $5 and for 20 years, let me add that. So you're just comparing, Romy, the $100, the yellow. I don't see your screen. Oh, sorry. Romy. I already sent you what I had. I'm you sent trying it now? to put it in. I emailed you why I had it. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Um, so, uh, Okay, I see why this could be confusing suddenly. Okay, I'm gonna look at, you emailed it to me? Yes. I took a picture of what I'm putting in, but I'm trying to make sure I have everything because for the first project, there's no cash flow for year four and five. Whereas to project B, double pane, mm -hmm. there is a cash flow. I see, I see, I see. I should have put a cash flow or does it make sense? Because you can't get a profitability index unless you have a cash flow. Yeah, it's, so they're Romy, not, they're you're, not, you're correct. Oh, you're correct. But anyway. That's why I can't figure that? it out. Because yeah. it's, do I just leave it at three years or just do we leave it at three or do we have to add more? Why Why are you saying about three? Because this goes for 20. 20 years. Yeah, but there's no cash flow under project A for four and five. Or is it just going to be $5 for the remainder? After because year three? you discounted them? I'm sorry, what? Because you discounted them? Like, okay, what it, what, it, what am I staring at? So year zero, you say we're going to spend 150. And then end of right. year one, what does the 100 come from? That's for um, the investment in the single pane. Mm. And then year two, it's so, 50. No, I don't know where you're getting the numbers or imagining. Like, so, I... okay, uh, T.Y. Okay. For this question that we're that you're doing, so if I'm accounting for the five dollar in twenty years or whatever, it gives me a negative value. So I'm definitely not going to choose this, even if I was adding to whatever I did before. All right. Um. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. Okay, Romy. I'm not sure. Let me finish with Romy. Romy, I'm not sure what you're thinking. This is saying, but. Yellow is just saying you're going to spend a hundred dollars. And the blue is saying you're going to spend 150 per pane, but you're going to make, or you're going to save $5 per year for each pane. So if we're going to do this on a pane basis for each pane of glass. So my point about the blue is that even though it's cost more than the yellow, you get a benefit. You so you need to more. you need to put that together. Okay. So, so you gotta check if it's more than one. Basically, I say to you, use the profitability index to see if this is worth it. So you're just gonna check okay. the blue one to see if that's worth it. So the other I one doesn't have any benefit to offset. Like it doesn't have a benefit part. It's just a hundred dollars. So you're just going to make sure that the blue has a benefit before you pick the blue. Okay. So I computed on Excel, the PV for the, for the annuity for the $5. For the $5. And uh, what'd you get? I got, I don't know if it's correct, but I got $42 and 57 cents. Okay. It's negative. And it's a negative. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And that's negative. why I got two. But so okay. it it depends how you put it in, right? You put it right. in as a cost savings. Um, you put in as a positive that you're going to receive. And so today it's a negative. 
So it reduces the cost of the pain. So it's $150, but it's offset by the 42, but still, still this is uh, this benefit, the benefit is not enough to offset the cost. Because it would be what one fifty minus the forty two. Yeah, it's no. not. It's still more expensive than that's the yellow one. Still not less than the hundred. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's the only way we would inve then invest in it if it were less than the mm -hmm. hundred. Okay. Would you guys be mad if I changed this just a little bit? <laughs> I'm just gonna add that so that you can do the PI of both of them and compare them. Okay. I'm just gonna say single pane window costs. And uh, they save one dollar. Let's say. So I'm gonna add in that. So I'm just gonna let that one be one dollar. So that way you can do the profitability index of both of them. Oh, so I don't get it. I don't get what you just added. Yeah, me either. I think that confused me more. It's more confusing because well, remember, it wasn't the it wasn't the window costing anything. It was that um the heating was the heating was costing thing. lower. It just no. Yeah, so the blue, so the blue saves you, gives you a benefit of five dollars per year. And so this is going to be, this is going to be that this way you can. So I asked you to calculate the profitability index. The profitability index is the present value of future cash flows divided by the initial cost. Yeah, which we did that right there. So I, I just wanted you to be able to calculate it for both. But now you guys are more confused. Yeah. Wow. Because we had profitability index for the other one before. It was 1.0083 for the $100 one. And this How, other one What was, was your different. benefit? How do you have a profitability index without a benefit? You didn't have any benefit in the question. You shouldn't have gotten a profitability index. What do you mean? Profitability index is the present value of future cash flows divided by the initial investment. Yes. So we're going to see a positive cash flow, one dollar per year. Oh my God! But from what I understand, profitability index is NPV of our initial investment. The present value of future cash flows, yeah, or equals NPV in Excel divided by the initial investment. Which was calculated before. So how do you want me to factor in the $1 per year for the single thing? I don't understand that. I don't understand the- I can the, take the, it off, but I don't- all you're going to do then is calculate the the profitability index of the um, of the one in blue, and it's it's still what is it going to be? What's your profitability index going to be? You mean just like we're redoing the same equation, but in su subbing out the five dollars, adding in a dollar. A dollar for no, I was forget it. Just do what you were doing, but do it correctly. So the blue, I want you to get the profitability index. So how I did that was NPV over one hundred for the blue. Yes, the blue. No, no, no. For the blue. So for the blue, I first did I did NPV over one fifty. Then I did another PV. For the five dollar savings. 
Hmm. Okay. So let me, um, let me get my iPad. <clears throat> Forty two fifty seven. Yeah, that's the other one. We got we all got that apparently. That's the uh, the five dollar savings. Yeah, it's forty two fifty seven. Yep. Got it right. Is it forty two fifty seven? Yeah. Yeah, we got that one. The negative value. But now I'm just confused with what she wants me to do with the dollar. No, I took it off, Rhoda. Oh. I don't want to confuse okay. you. I raised it. I took it off. It's not there anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's like it's gone. Okay, I'm just going to show you my iPad. So for the profitability index, the formula is to take the present value of future capitals divided by the investment. But and, Dr. Um, Dr. Dr. Longabadi, can you show that formula back, please? It's here as well. No, I just want to, I want to, you see why I was adding the initial value to it? Of course, I see why you did that, but okay. Excel doesn't give you NPV. Okay. Excel just gives you this. That's why I rewrote the formula with this so that you could use Excel. Okay. And that's why I wrote it here, like, so you could use Excel. I put equals. That's not, that's why I did that. Okay. Because, um. Unfortunately, Excel does things differently, but that's not that's not what NPV means. NPV does not just mean present value of future cash flows, but that what that's what Excel uses. Okay. So that the present value of future cash flows in this case is what? What do you get from the window pane? Which of them? Okay, well, the first one, what do you get from it? I got 100.83, which I divided by 100 and gave me 1.0083. Why do you get 100.83? Where is that number coming from? What did you? I did equals NPV, bracket 0 0.1, comma so that, 20. Wait, no, 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 because in the first one, you spend $100. Mm-hmm. And there's no stated benefit. So it's zero. So the profitability index for the first one is uh, the present value of future cash flows, but there are no future cash flows in the first one. That's why I was trying to add one divided by the initial cost. So what did we get? It's there's nothing for the first one divided by the initial cost of 100. So the profitability index is zero for the first one. Wow. So this is called the single pane. Wow. 
we didn't estimate any benefit. We weren't told about a benefit. The double pane, the cost was 150 and the benefit, the benefit was $5 for 20 years. Per pain, right? But we're doing the whole thing by per pain. So the present value of future cash flows is what did you get for this one? We got 42.57. Okay, so you did PV 12%. And then what? Wait. Yes, ma'am. We did one. No, but it's not. I'm getting confused. So it's, it's we didn't have 0 0.1, so we used 0 0.1. No, it should be, yes, it should be 0 0.10. Oh, it was 10% for this one? Yeah, it's 10%. Yes. Oh, it's zero point one zero. Crazy now. <laughs> and I put the number of periods, which would be twenty. Twenty. Then one fifty. No, the no, payment no. is then five. Because that's how much we're getting. It's twenty five then five. And then the FV would be zero. And then payment at the end would be also zero, and that's how we got forty two fifty seven. Okay, and then you divide it by. We we didn't divide by anything. I didn't. I just left it at forty-two anything. fifty-seven. What are we supposed to divide it by? You're asked to calculate the profitability index. Here's the formula. So we divide by one fifty. Yeah. Oh wait a minute. Forty-two fifty-seven divided by one fifty. Zero point two eight three eight. And this one, okay, so the, the numerator was $42 and? And 57 cents. Seven. And then you divide by 150. It's obviously less than one. So how do we conclude? So, we don't go with that one because it's less than one. Exactly. If the PI is, exactly. if the PI is less than one, yeah. it's, not a, exactly. it's not a profitable, okay. Yeah, but both of, both of them are less than one in this case. Exactly. So we don't go with any of them then? No. Not using the profitability index. But if you were to do, if you were just to say which one is more profitable, but but still, they you, if you use a profitability index, they don't give you anything. What's the Why are you going to change the window? So you'd have to get more information, right? Right. You'd have I don't to, think the question is the question. Not, it doesn't say that. It just says get the profitability index and decide which one to get. Yeah. And both of them are no good. So PI must be greater than one to accept a project. Okay, so it's past 830. If you guys want to stay on or I'll just keep recording. If people have to go, it's fine. We'll just keep recording. And look at Professor, is it, is it okay if I handwrite some of this stuff? Because it's of hard course. for me to put it no, on you don't document. have to, I don't expect you. You do a lovely job in Excel, but I don't expect that, Romy. You can just write it out and send it. So we can technically write that it, we would reject. Well, Okay. Windows? Yeah. Mm -hmm. According to the profitability index. Okay. Like you could say mm. that it looks like the double pane is better. Well, actually, it's not even better than the single pane, is it? 
No, the single pane is better. Because but... single pane is better, but neither of them are profitable. So, no, we need more information to make our argument to defend any 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 construction or any new windows. So, what else? Okay, for eight. I'm just going to give you some guidance here. So the eight is just the NPV, right? Yes. Just keep in mind, I told you here that A is an investment project and um, B is a finance project. So you analyze them. Hmm. Just anyway, if you're going to use the NPV, then it should be clear. I don't tell you which method to use, but you can always count on NPV to give you the answer. So go for it. And it tells you 12%, so that's straightforward, I think. And number nine, you have to do the NPV profile thing. And I tell you the rates to use here. So you think you can finish it on your own? And I'll just see why you wanted me to look at number I have, a question that I, did. I have a question on number nine. Patty? So when I did number nine, I did the MPV per percentage, right? Yeah. But when I tried to do the graph, I, I can't pick, I don't know if the numbers are close. Maybe I'm wrong. But the graph, the line, it just stayed like a steady, almost a straight line. Yeah, it's very flat. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. Not wrong. Okay, then. Okay, thank you then. Yeah. So this is an opportunity. We used everything I taught you. Um, there's more exercises that I shared on the platform. I know everyone's busy, but just to understand more, you can do those exercises and I can post the answers. They're, they're similar to these. Um, for the cash budget, let me, let me look at number five. Okay, are there any other questions? Otherwise, I'm going to talk about the cash budget. Professor, you said you're extending the due date to tomorrow? Tomorrow so night, yeah. So you can have a nice rest. <laughs> I'm sure you and when is it. our our journal our journal reflection is due when? Next next Friday. Okay. Spreading. Journal due next week, correct? Yes. And so next week I'm gonna talk about the big project, which is I'm gonna make as simple as possible. Okay. Um I'm uh, I made it the last time I taught, which was the first time I taught. I think it was way too complex. So I'm going to downgrade it a bit, or I don't say that, but I want to make it a, a little easier. So that's what I've been working on. So I'll present that next class. We're going to talk about that. And then um, I'll put up the materials for this week, which just continues in, in budgets. And um, you can read through the slides that I, I put there and mm -hmm. we can, uh, we can continue the conversation next week. But the main thing is, yeah, to put it all together in the assignment. Uh, also, um, I'm not sure what's happening with some of you on the uh, presentation. Let me know which group you're in or if you're presenting by yourself for the, um, the presentations. I put the presentation information up. And the group, mm -hmm. yeah, like weeks ago so that's for the presentation so you have yeah just review every all the material uh that i put up about the assignment but i didn't see the the presentation there was some that there was um come come let me just go to it yeah i'll i'll share it here
I didn't see the presentation information on, on online. I had to look up. So I put everything so you could see it when you hit course materials and I've laid it all out and it says um, case study presentation plus rubric due December okay. 6th. Oh, I saw this, but what I was concerned about you, the, the document, I had to look it up. Oh, it's not there. And I want to be sure that what I got is what you're using. Well, it's, I put it in, in the week six, it's there. Document, okay. In a week six instructions, case study rubric. And no, I saw the rubric. Article. Oh, okay, yes, I see I put everything awesome. in. Yes, I see it. So that's the right article. Yes. That's and I, wow. I asked you to choose between three options fee for service capitation and salary payment model and you're going to talk about the problems with the model in-depth and critical assessment of the trends in use Wait. of the model and you can reference your textbook and there's some readings and in the article there's lots of references Wait. good night barbara good night So, T.Y., if you're going to do it on your own or you're going to join with somebody, just let me know. Um, Romy, are, are we joining? Yeah, I told you last week. You said you, it was groups of two, correct? Could be. What did I write here? I said um, groups. What did I say about groups? We, we ended up doing group of three. I'm doing it with Barbara and Rhoda. Right. Okay, so, so we'll do groups of three then. Then you'll be with Lydia. Okay. We're six, right? Mm -hmm. We're six. Okay. So you guys well, have I to one. To I, um, okay. So, so are we going to talk about cash budget? Or you're going to just hand in five different ones, TY? And I'll talk about cash budget next week. <laughs> I'd like to do all the problems so everybody knows the answers. But uh, uh, just pick five because we did more than five today. Okay. All right. And then we'll just talk about cash budgets or anything else that's outstanding next class. So once you guys hand everything in. Yeah, but I, I seem not to be getting something correct in what you just said. J just give me a second. I want to go to the rubric. Um, yes. This said, um, your women will choose between fee for service, capitation payment, or salary payment. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the, um, the group with... Patty, they chose fee for service. Okay, so we have to choose between the other two. Yeah. Okay. Are we good? Are we saying good night? Good yes. night. Good night. But I'm still here. <laughs> Are you going to say TY? Yes, please. Okay, good night. I'm going to turn the video recording off.